Welcome to Touched and Empowered, a show created to empower individuals to value their lives by hosting think tank discussions that will inspire positive action. Touched and Empowered with Katie and Ace starts now. Welcome back for part two with Katie and Ace. And it's really funny. So like, I really enjoy being creative with how I look. I do. I have a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. For instance, I have lots of outfits. I have all the colors, all of the fun. Because it really is a form of expression. So right now, right. in this moment, this is how I feel. Katie is young. Katie <laughs> young and all the colors. Plus, I actually watched, um, I don't know if you know this, I love X-Men. Yes. I actually really love X-Men. So I was re-watching um, the TV series X-Men Evolution. And I was also re-watching um, X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> so this was a difficult <laughs> set. Right. All the 80s colors, all the 80s hair, all of that fun, inspirational content. I was really enjoying um, how everyone was dressed and how everyone was uh expressing themselves and plus i find the 80s to be such a vibrant era it's with every era it's got its highs and it's got its lows yeah and the 90s had it's more of the it so had its highs and its lows just that it was of a different energy signature i guess because it's the same thing with like the 70s didn't had a lot of ebbs and flows but it wasn't as dramatic as the 80s was right the 70s the 90s had a lot of energy going but it wasn't as dramatic as the 80s yeah and i don't know what that is like and not not in a bad way i really you know for anyone that is a zillennial or millennial or cusp or whatever gen x but that era the 80s is just like wow color and then the 70s was like, wow, flair and peace signs and love and discos. And then the eight, the 90s was like hip hop R&B explosion, um, you know, and boy bands and girl bands that we somehow still know the lyrics to, even if we don't <laughs> listen to it every day. Just get on the karaoke mic and you're like, I know every word without looking at the screen. This is interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but, but that's almost as entertaining as I, I grew up listening to the 50s and 60s because mm-hmm. that was the only radio station my mom would play in the house because she refused to listen to any of the songs from the 80s and 90s after she listened to one song it was like nope that's vulgar and that's it oh yeah the honesty of being vulgar in the 90s <laughs> the censorship was gone it's like sorry we're not going to listen to the carpenters anymore you know <laughs> yeah there, there's no more dancing around the topic and we're just going to talk straight out about it yeah my mom was like nope mm, 50s and 60s music it is so the fact that i know more lyrics from that generation of music than my own I found was hysterical until my son came along my son was born in 2003 he grew up listening to everything from Frank Sinatra (laughs) to whatever current music his classmates were listening to so my son can sing all of these oldies with my mom he can sing doo-wop with grandpa Mm -hmm. he can then sing all of my boy band music he can sing all of my husband's 80s music and then sing to whatever he's listening to and the funny thing is is he came home the other day and he's like mom I just realized the song that I grew up listening to is on the classic rock channel and I'm like yes so my music's on classic rock dad's music's on us he's like no this song came out after I was born and it's on the classic rock channel (laughs) yeah (laughs) Oh, the pain on his face was so real. It was so funny. It was deliciously funny. And he knows that I find it hysterical. (laughs) But the music is like everything else in the world. It evolves so quickly. It really does. And have you been noticing that some of it is taking from like, 
from like the songs of the 90s, oh, 90s, the 70s, 80s. there's like small things that I'm like, that was a 90s hit. That small part right there, that was there, a 90s. There's little, there's little nuances that okay. they are pulling forward from the past. And okay. some of them are being done very well. And some of them are being done not so well. But that's yeah, okay. when I heard when I heard um, "Rich Girl" by Gwen Stefani, don't get me wrong, I love Gwen Stefani, and mm-hmm. I love her her original music with no doubt. I really, really do. When I heard "Rich Girl" done by her, I went. <laughs> I love the face. I was like. And then I couldn't find the original reggae version of that song anywhere. It wasn't on Apple. It wasn't on Spot. I was like, where is this? I could only find it on YouTube. And then eventually it, it came out on the other platforms. But I was like, fuck that. That, that felt better. <laughs> Why would you like that? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I get it. It's it fine. Just, it's fine. Well, that's it just, one of the things that I find is hysterical because back in the day, and I know this is probably going back a bit, but Mm. you would have a song and it would be sung by multiple artists in multiple genres across multiple platforms. And one of them would make it a, a hit single, but that didn't negate that any of the other ones previously sang it. Right? Everyone still got credit for the version that they sang. Yeah. And then all the scandals and stuff came out about people stealing property. Yeah. And it's interesting because like, all right, what I understand is if you have an idea and it gets to people Mm -hmm. and you do it in your style, the people that follow your style will buy your version. Right. So you're not taking customers from anybody. True. But I think it also has to do with the agreement on however the song is written. Because like, for example, the song, I Will Always Love You, made famous by Whitney Houston. Yes. Dolly Parton has an equally, well, I can't say equally, but also has a very popular version of the song Mm. versus just more country because that was her genre. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that the owner of the lyrics and the owner of the music is not owned by either one of them. So it's the owner of the music and the lyrics who gets to decide who sings the songs. So that person might be the one who's deciding you can sing it, you can sing it, you can sing it, and we'll put it up in the different genres and see which one hits. I could be wrong. It's just a theory of Katie. It's a good theory. It's a good theory. Um, in the music industry. All right. So going back to the, <laughs> this, is, this is like my previous, previous life. So when it comes to IP and music rights, right? You can own the rights to the music. Um, did you know that the song uh, that uh, Ariana Grande sang it came from the it came from the classical musical um, the Sound of Music. Yeah, favorite things. Yeah, favorite things. So her version of favorite things, she actually didn't comply to the rights of that and got sued massively. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's okay. That's why you always do your research or you make sure that you are saying, I am doing a cover of this song by this artist. It wasn't even a cover. So they manipulated the lyrics a little bit to fit the times. Oh. So regardless, you're still utilizing parts of that music that's been created. Right. Even You've, you've emulated your own version of it. You still have to contribute or attribute some type of... You still have to give attribution to the original. Attribution or even just like, just giving the credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. The moment you don't do that, I know that like, you know, in high school, they teach everybody how to cite your stuff. 
Yeah, I really do need to do that. Because if you don't do that and you pass it off as your own, uh, plagiarism is real and it, yeah. it comes with a hefty bill. Yeah, uh, and not just in music, in like everything. Yeah. Especially, and, especially in writing. It is one thing to misquote someone when you're talking, but if you are quoting someone in writing, make sure that you cite your source because you want to give credit to the person who was the original artist or the original creator of that piece of work that you are borrowing a method from, borrowing context from, or content from. Exactly. And funny enough, so I actually got into a fight with somebody about this recently. So <laughs> now and let's talk about that because this is actually where the conversations of like, um, so I'm, I'm having an event, uh, creating an event. Uh, it'll be December 16th. 2023 or it was December 16th of 2023 and essentially what happened was the person that I was originally going to create this event with it didn't really work out no that happens sometimes it does it does but what I understood was the format of the event has been done Okay. So the basic format's completed. Okay. The format has been done by somebody else the and, and whatnot, except for this one component that I know I can do. Right? Okay. What we were going to do is I was going to go to this, these other partners who um, created a very similar event, pick their brains and ask them how we could possibly collaborate in the future. Right? Okay. The day before I went into the collaboration or, or even discussed the collaboration with these other two partners, mm -hmm. me and the other person just had a falling out and we weren't able to do the event together. Okay. So your collaboration call ended up being a let's start from scratch call? Yeah. And the very interesting aspect of it was because I knew that the idea isn't copyrighted and I knew other people were doing something similar and I understood that our style of doing it isn't stealing. It's different. Right. Once you add your own execution, your own energy to something, it is not stealing. You may ask like, hey, this was an idea that I thought of with this person, maybe I'll give them some credit, right? Mm -hmm. Problem was, I actually came up with this idea four times prior to meeting with this one person. <laughs> and I was going to utilize this idea with other sub, sub partners because I understood that they have a different contribution where we can work together in the best way. For instance, I tried to do a podcast prior to this, but it was completely different had a different energy, had a different execution, and had a different contribution effort, right? Right. I put all my focus on this one because that one wasn't going to bring in the, uh, didn't have the same values as Katie and I. Right. And that is okay. You're not seeing eye to eye on some on something that person whoever you're going to be working with they could work on their own project they could do it themselves and you just keep focusing on you you focus on what you got don't focus on them trying to steal anything from you because they didn't <laughs> true and in some cases for example with what we have at the teen suicide prevention society with the script for the talk that saves lives if you want to steal it share it with the world you're just going to help save more lives. And I'm okay with that. Exactly. So is the rest of the board. <laughs> exactly. And that's the same thing here. So that person, she has that idea. Now she can go make it on her own with somebody else. That means there's right. more people to be healed. Right. For her demographic. And then whoever crosses over, it's perfectly fine. They can choose. And then for mine, for the people that really are aligned with me as well, they will also grow. As long as you're on the same mission, 
there's no competitors. So you're all achieving the mission together. Right. It's only if you are purposefully trying to steal someone else's audience, someone else's customers, someone else's client base, if you are doing it in the energy of direct competition, then that taints everything that you do. And that's a cause you make for yourself. The person that's working with you, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. They'll survive. I've met a lot of people who tried to steal, I don't know what it is. Like they, they've tried to steal clients from other people. And I'm like, mm. never really works out. No, it doesn't really work out. And there are so many different variables that as someone from the outside looking in, you really have no clue what really happened in that business arrangement, in that business agreement or whatever. So when we think we know what happened between two prior partners, take it with a grain of salt because you don't know the details. Yeah, could you clarify that? So like understanding that they these two individuals didn't work well together. Right, if these two particular individuals that I am thinking of did not work well together. They both went their separate ways. They both created their own product, which in my opinion was vastly different. There were yeah. elements that were similar, but the products themselves were vastly different. Mm -hmm. Yet both of them claimed the other one of stealing. Okay. I have no opinion as to who's right because I don't know the details of that original agreement they have. I don't know the details of the breaking apart or separation of the agreement that they have. I don't know the details on how they individually created their products that are just semi-similar. I don't have any of that stuff. So when I was asked what my opinion was as to who was right, you might both be right. I don't know. I don't have enough information and I don't want any more information because it's none of my business. Yeah. In those situations, I'm like, okay, well, that's really cool. Good, great. Great talk. I got to go focus Help on yourself. this. Stuff. <laughs> um, so that's the only reason that I bring it up is to be mindful that we might see similarities. And if we make a comment as to, oh, that sounds similar to someone else and you are you receive something negative because someone feels like that their stuff has been stolen or that they feel like they are being accused of stealing when that's not what you're doing. Just give them space. Exactly. And, you don't, and just say, you don't need to know. You were just trying to compare apples to apples and apparently it's apples and oranges. And funny enough, I would, yeah, because we had totally different mindsets. So I knew mm -hmm. that it was not gonna work but I and I was like okay it's fine um but what I did understand was somebody did warn me about this person prior to uh, okay they already had a, like they they already kind of had a strike against them if that makes sense mm -hmm. so um the person who warned me about this individual I was like I gotta give the person a chance Right. Like if you really do, you can't always go off of the hearsay of others. Really, you really can't. You really, really can't, in my opinion. If it seems off, chances are it is. True. But I mean, in my opinion, when you're working with somebody, you're learning about somebody, whatnot, watch their actions and see if it matches what the other person perceived. Yeah, because actions do speak louder than words by themselves. Yeah, and sometimes a bad reputation could could honestly crucify the wrong person. And do you wanna be on that train of one of those individuals who did that? Yeah, nope, mm -mm. not interested. It's really important in my opinion to really see it for yourself. So when this person did, show me the exact signs of what was perceived, I was like, Thank you.
I appreciate your time and thank you for this. And we're good on what we just did together. We'll leave that on a bow and go on to our own missions. Perfectly fine, clean and clear. Don't need to pursue it anymore. No need for drama. Lesson learned. And then we can take the lesson and move on. Yeah. Another thing is like, it's not like, there's so much about keeping your integrity in those situations. Um, that I think a lot of people kind of get muddled into, especially when you get bullied. A lot of people try to gang up on you about X, Y, and Z, they spread a rumor, blah, 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 that happens. Usually it means you're doing something right, to be honest, one. Two, it also means that you have the power to stand up for the people that have been in your position. Right. And make sure something like that never happens again. It all falls back underneath of holding yourself into in integrity. It really does. And I think, you know, there gossip mills, in my opinion, are the fastest way to destroy yourself and the people around you. Yes, and even if you're just repeating somebody else's gossip, you're still feeding into the mill. Exactly. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's like, learn for the truth if you're interested in finding out. Or just let it go. Um, okay, whatever. Yeah, there might be right. Yeah. And that's actually how I've been. I'm like, you might be right, but I got to give her a chance. Give her a chance. I'm like, okay, you were right. Now I found out. Now we can close it. Okay, let's move on to actually doing the healing work with the right people. There we go. And on that beautiful note, thank you everyone for yet another, another fun, wonderful, colorful episode of Touched and Empowered. We greatly appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We hope that the discussion today will inspire you to take positive action in your life. Until next week, be empowered.